what we talked about last week. Who did we talk about last week? Peter. Peter is probably the person in the Bible that I most identify with. I mean, other than Jesus. But the, Peter is the guy that I probably most identify with because Peter was really excitable. Peter, somebody would ask a question, and Peter was the guy who'd be like, oh, 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 me, 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 me. Or sometimes he didn't even raise his hand. He just sort of blurted out the answer or blurted out whatever the first thing was that was on his mind. Now, sometimes that can be really great. A lot of times teachers really enjoy people who participate freely, right? They don't have to be like, come on guys, we'll call on somebody if nobody volunteers, right? So sometimes being the guy who volunteers right away is a really good thing, but sometimes it gets you into trouble, right? And with Peter, it seems like Jesus was always having to clean up a mess that Peter made. It seemed like Jesus was always having to do something that would, all right, he, he took something that, that, Peter, that Peter meant for good or something that started well and then it went bad, right? Like last week, we talked about what was the really bold thing that Peter did. He, not only did he try to walk on water, what did he do? He actually walked on water. So they see Jesus out on the sea and Peter goes, hey, Jesus, if that's really you, let me come out to you. Jesus goes, come here. And Peter goes, cool. Jumps out of the boat, and he's like, oh, yeah, right? He gets halfway out there, and he suddenly decides that the things around him, the stuff that's going on around him, the waves and the wind and the storms around him are suddenly more powerful than the one he had his eyes on. And what happened? <laughs> right down into the water, and all of a sudden, now this guy who was super brave and super outgoing, like, hey, Jesus, let me come out to you. All of a sudden, he's like, help me, I got it. And so Jesus walks up to him, grabs him, pulls him back up on top of the water, okay? Didn't pull him into a boat, did it, nothing normal. He goes, Peter, stand up. You're making a fool of yourself. <laughs> pulls him up out of the water, and they walk together back to the boat. So right there, in that moment where something really cool was going on, Peter blows it. Peter looks at it and just goes, I can't handle this, and messes it up. And Jesus takes him and goes, no, 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 come on. You got this. And he walks with him back to the boat. There was a time where Peter really wanted to show his devotion to Jesus. He really wanted to show Jesus that, that he believed him and that, and that he was his guy, right? That he would be with him. And so there was a time when Jesus said, hey, guys, here's what's going to happen. A time's coming when I'm going to have to go before the religious leaders. There's going to be a time where people are going to rise up against me. There's going to be a time where people are not going to want to hear the things that I have to say. They're not going to want to believe the truth. And they are actually going to arrest me. They're going to kill me. But don't worry, I'm going to raise from the dead three days later. And Peter, in that moment, wanting to show his devotion to Jesus, goes, oh, uh, uh, excuse me, Jesus, Jesus, come. Can I have a word with you, please? And he grabs Jesus by the arm and, come here. And Jesus goes, yes, Peter? Peter says, it's not happening. Ain't going to happen. Not while I'm around. They, they, nobody's going to put a hand on you. They're, they're, they're not going to come near you, let alone arrest you. And they, you, you think they're going to kill you? No, 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 no. I will be here and I will. <laughs> Peter means so well. He wants to show how devoted he is to Jesus. And so he says, Jesus, what you say is going to happen, ain't going to happen. Jesus looks at him. This guy that he said, hey, you're a rock. He looks at this guy and he goes, Get away from me, Satan. I'm sorry, Jesus, what did you call me? You want to go right now? Come on. Come on. No, he says, get away from me, Satan. He actually refers to Peter as Satan. Now, he's not calling Peter Satan. What he's doing is he's going, Peter, you are letting the devil speak through you right now. You are letting the devil twist your mind in a way that rather than believing the truth, 
rather than God's will being done, you have your own agenda, or Satan has his own agenda that, no, 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 this isn't going to happen. You don't have to worry about that. We're going to stop this from happening. God says this is going to happen. Jesus said this was going to happen. And so Peter was actually speaking for Satan. And so Jesus looks at this guy who means so well. He didn't mean to say the wrong thing. He was trying to be a good guy. And yet Jesus, again, has to correct him. And he says, get away from me, Satan. When was the last time a friend ever said that to you? <laughs> right? Excuse me, I'm, I am not Satan. Right? And so Peter is once again in this place where he's just like, ah. And this brings us to a night that Jesus had his last meal with his disciples. They finish up and they go to the garden. And Jesus says, hey guys, wait here and pray. I'm gonna go further into the garden and pray. So Jesus goes into the garden. He comes back out and what does he find these guys doing? Sleeping. Here's Peter. This guy who's so devoted, this guy who's, who loves Jesus so much and wants to do the right thing, can't even stay awake. Jesus goes, hey, get up. They follow Jesus. And this is when the people that Judas had gathered together, the people that had paid Judas to lead them to Jesus, they show up to arrest Jesus. It's some of the representatives from the high council, some of the servants of the high priest and things like that, and they show up and some guards and they show up and they go, are you Jesus? And Jesus says, yep. And it's awesome. It says everyone fell to the ground. <laughs> this is like one of those force push things, right? Where Jesus goes, yes, I am. And they go. They all fall to the ground. They stand up and... <clears throat> We said, are you Jesus? And again, this is where Jesus uses the epic voice, right? I am. <laughs> and so, at this point, Peter remembers the things that Jesus said. Hey, they're going to arrest me. They're going to torture me. They're going to execute me. And Peter, once again, wanting to do the right thing, We've got to understand that Peter had great motives. Peter was one of these guys who wanted to do it the right way. He wanted to be the man that you could count on. He wanted to be right there all the time. And so in that moment where they begin to say, all right, you're under arrest, Peter grabs a sword and he leaps forward and goes, hi and hacks off the ear of a servant to the high priest. All this guy did was show up to work. That's all, think about that. All he did, he got up in the morning, put on his tunic and his robe, kissed his wife goodbye. Bye, honey, bye, have a nice day. And they hugged each other and, and he goes off to work and, and during the first part of the day, he's just doing his jobs around the, the uh, high priest's house and he's just this servant guy and he's happy. And then the high priest, Caiaphas goes, hey, they're going to go get this guy, Jesus. I want you to go with them so that we have, I, I have somebody there that I know is going to give me the real story, is going to make sure that things happen the right way. And this guy just kind of goes, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever you say, I work for you. And he just heads off. Gets with the gr group of people, and they just head off to the garden. And this guy is probably just be like, I like being a servant. I'm having a good day so far. Right? And he just heads off to the garden. Little does he know that this whack job is going to leap out from behind a bush with a sword and go, who's the most random person I can dismember? Whack! He goes, ow! Here's Jesus again. And Jesus knowing Peter and knowing Peter's heart, looks at Peter and he's like, dude, <laughs> unnecessary. And he looks at Peter and he goes, dude, put the sword away. 
you're not allowed to play with sharp things anymore. <laughs> and he walks over, Jesus walks over. Okay, that whole friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears thing, it was a figure of speech. And he takes the, takes the guy's ear and he just goes, ta-da. <laughs> now, why in that moment, it didn't make everybody go, oh, maybe he is the son of God. He just reattached that dude's ear to his head. I don't know, but it didn't. And again, Peter is in this place where good motives wanted to do the right thing, and yet it wasn't what God had planned. It wasn't God's will. It was Peter stepping out, trying to make what he thought would be the best thing to happen actually happen. And yet, Jesus didn't smack him. He didn't kick him out of the garden. He didn't say, oh, I don't know that guy. Oh, gee, man, that guy's... He looks at Peter and he goes, hey, put your sword away. That's not how this is going to happen. And this all leads up to a few hours before Jesus' death. When Peter, this guy who just a short time earlier said, Jesus, I will die for you. Once Jesus is arrested, he be Peter becomes this shadowy figure who just sort of hangs out in the background. He sort of just watches and, and they, he, he follows a, a ways behind the guards and things that are that are taking Jesus to the high priest and he gets to the high priest's house and they take him inside the gates. Peter can't even get inside the gates into the courtyard. He needs one of the other disciples who knew a guy, who knew a guy, who knew a guy to let people into the inner uh, to let Peter into the inner courtyard. So Peter is inside this small courtyard and it's freezing. It's really cold. And so they build a fire and Peter, cold just like everybody else, gets as close as he can to the fire. You know, he's, he's got his hood pulled up and he's not wanting to draw any attention. And he's standing there and he's warming his hands. And the servant comes around. He says, can I get you something to drink? No, 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 I'm fine. See, we have, we have Pepsi products chocolate milk. Hey, hold on. Do I recognize you? You, you're, are you one of Jesus guys? You know, those, those guys, I forget, uh, Despicles or Despicles or whatever they call you guys. Are you, are you one of the guys who's hanging out with Jesus? Peter, the rock. Looks this girl in the eyes and goes, No, 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 I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. Well, her question sort of piques other people's interests around the fire because they don't recognize, they don't, he's not one of the people who would typically be in the courtyard of the high priest. And, you know, the people who aren't typically in a place are the people that stick out, right? And so they begin to look and they, they murmur to each other, and they're like, Do you know who this guy is? Yeah, I don't know. Mike let him in. I, I don't know. He knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy. Finally, one of them speaks up and goes, yeah, what? who are you? What are you doing here? Are you, are you one of Jesus' followers? Is that why you're here? Why, why would somebody like you be so interested and be in this courtyard right now? You're one of Jesus' followers, aren't you? And Peter the rock, the guy that he wanted to be the guy. He wanted to be the one who was most true, who was most faithful. You know that fear that creeps up when you realize that you've been caught? That thing where you were pretty sure you were going to get away with it. You were pretty sure that nobody was going to notice. And then they notice. You know that fear, that adrenaline that kicks up inside you and suddenly you can feel your pulse in your neck? Suddenly, Peter's neck begins to go. He goes, no, 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 of course not. I'm not one of those guys. 
No, 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 I am, I'm definitely not somebody who knows Jesus. No, no, no. Then there's an interesting encounter. A guy comes in who had been in the garden. What did Peter do in the garden? Hacked this guy's ear off, right? This guy walks up to the fire, and he's a relative of the guy whose ear got cut off. And he comes in, and he's like, hey, Toby. Hey, Steve, how's it going? John, how's your, how's your daughter doing? She's like, you. You. You hacked my cousin's ear off in the garden. People go, wait, wait, he was in the garden? Why was he? Wait, wait, wait. First you're in the garden, and now you're here? You are one of Jesus' disciples. You are one of his followers. You, admit it. Just admit it. You are. Peter's no longer just fearful. He's no longer nervous. He's no longer trying to hide. At this point, Peter is enraged because he knows that aggression is the only way that he's going to get out of this alive. And he stands up and he goes, no, why do I have to keep telling you people? I'm not one of those guys. I don't even know that guy in there. Seemed like something was going on here. So I walked in, excuse me. I have no idea who he is. And the rooster crowed. And that sick feeling when you know you've let somebody down, we all know that feeling, right? When you know you've disappointed somebody, when you know that what you did was absolutely the wrong choice, and you knew it was the wrong choice, but you couldn't stop yourself. Peter has just messed up in the most epic way. He let down the person that he most loved in the whole world. game over that's it there's no way that Peter could ever even be associated with anything of Jesus again this is it he had blown it way too bad Jesus was tried kind of he was handed over to the Romans he was beaten within an inch of his life and then he was hung on a cross until he died. Then his body was put in a borrowed tomb. And it was a really dark three days. Imagine being in Peter's shoes, knowing that the last thing you had to do with Jesus was you denying that you even knew this man who had absolutely changed your life, you had disavowed any knowledge, any association with him. That's what Peter was sitting in. That is how Peter felt. Three days after his death, Jesus did exactly what he told Peter he was gonna do before he rose from the dead. Mary Magdalene and some other ladies saw him alive. Jesus presented himself to his disciples, said, hey guys, I'm back. Guys, I did just what I told you I was going to do. Thomas, who had a hard time believing anything, came back to a place of believing that Jesus had actually risen from the dead. And about two weeks go by, and the disciples are sort of in this weird place. Jesus had shown himself to them a couple times since he had risen from the dead, but they weren't doing ministry like they were. They weren't out on the road. Jesus, they weren't hanging out with Jesus, having him teach them. They, they were just sort of in this weird place. Really, they were kind of bored. And the disciples are sitting around. A few of the disciples are sitting around. Peter, John, James, and a few others are sitting around down by the Sea of Galilee. 
Now, what's down at the Sea of Galilee that has anything to do with Peter? Water and his, his boat. So the, some of the disciples are sitting there, and Peter goes, I'm going fishing. And everybody else, they, they like stop skipping stones and like, all right, we'll come too. So they pile on the boat. They go out and they go fishing. Guess how many fish they catch? Zero. Not one. And they're like, yeah, just our luck. So they're coming back in. They're about 100 yards out. And they see this guy on the shore. They, they couldn't really see who it was. Everybody wore similar clothes, right? And so they're just like, uh, and this guy goes, hey, throw your nets on the right side of the boat. Apparently, they've been throwing their nets on the wrong side of the boat. Throw your nets on the right side of the boat. And Peter goes, Psh, we've been fishing all day. Throwing our nets on the other side of the boat's not going to work. John's there, and he goes, Psh, shut up, let's try it. They throw their nets on the other side of the boat, and they haul in more fish than they can even lift out of the water. They, there's so many fish, they actually have to like scoop fish out of the nets in order to be able to get them up onto the boat. Peter goes, huh, that's funny. I haven't seen that happen since. And John goes, it's him. What kind of personality does Peter have? <laughs> Thank you, Jillian. Yes, Peter has a woo personality. John says, hey, it's him. And Peter goes, hmm? <laughs> he looks out at Jesus, and he goes, Lord! Now, Peter does not wait for the boat to dock. He doesn't do what a normal person would do and be like, hey! Instead, he does something like this. is actually what Peter did. They're still about 100 yards out. Peter sees Jesus like, Jesus! And he swims the shore. He gets to shore and he's like, hi Jesus. Hi. Hi. I swam here because I wanted to see you faster. And the other guys are on the boat going, what a tool. So eventually the boat pulls into the dock and the guys get off the boat, and Jesus goes, come on. And they, he takes them over to a place, and he has breakfast ready for them. And then he says, hey, go get some of the fish you caught. And Peter goes, okay, all right, I'll go get fish. And he goes back, and he grabs all these fish. And he comes running back, here, Jesus, hi, here you go. And they have a meal together kind of just like old times. They finish eating, and Jesus gets up from where he's sitting, and he, he makes his way over to where Peter is, and he sits down right next to Peter. What do you think Peter's thinking right at this moment? Oh gosh, you heard what I did. Oh, I'm busted. Hi, Jesus. Jesus looks at him and goes, how you doing? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kind of full of fishes right now. And Jesus asks him this, Peter, 
do you love me more than all this? Peter sits up a little straighter. He goes, well, yeah, y yes, yeah, uh, yes, of course I do. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Yes, Pete, yes, Jesus, I, I love you. Of course I love you. I love you with all my heart. And care for my lambs. Peter sits and considers what this could possibly mean. And then Jesus, a third time, Peter, do you love me? At this point, Peter's pretty offended. Because, you know, you ask somebody something once, you get an answer. You ask them a second time because maybe they didn't hear you. Ask a third time, and this must mean you don't believe them. And so Peter, after hearing Jesus say, do you love me? Yes, then feed my sheep. Do you love me? Then care for my lambs. Do you love me? Peter says, Lord, why well, you got to go there? You know all things. So who is he declaring that he believes Jesus to be? God. You know all things. You know my heart, you know I love you. How many times did Peter deny even knowing Jesus? How many times did Jesus ask Peter if he loved him? Three. And there's something important about what he tells him to do. He says, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. He's giving Peter the opportunity to declare his love for Jesus. Have you ever just wanted to be able to make it up to somebody? You've messed up, and if you just had another chance to show them how you really felt, if you just had an, another chance to do the right thing, you do it. Jesus goes, do you love me? And he gives Peter the opportunity And then he says, then feed my sheep. He's empowering Peter. He's going, you're one of my boys. You are still going to do what I called you to do. Do you love me? Yes. Then care for my sheep. Not just, so you're not just going to feed them once. You're going to care for them over time. People are going to come to you like I told you before. They're going to come to you like the fish. You're going to be a fisher of men. They're going to come to you. You're one of my boys. Peter, do you love me? You know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus sees Peter's heart. He sees who Peter is. He sees through all the knucklehead stuff. He sees through all the bad decisions. He sees through all the impulsive things that Peter does, maybe with good intentions, but it's the wrong thing to do. Jesus sees it, and Jesus believes in Peter. Peter he, Jesus knows who Peter is. And so J Jesus replied that there, it, that, sorry, this, is, this was earlier when Jesus asked the disciples, who do you believe me to be? The disciple, well, some say you're this, some say you're that. And Peter stands up and he goes, you're the Messiah. Jesus knew that that was Peter's heart. Jesus knew of Peter's faith. And after that, Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. That's who he knew Jesus to be. 
He's the, that's who he knew Peter to be. He was the rock. He was the one who loved Jesus in his heart and then did a bunch of knucklehead stuff. Anybody here identify with Peter at all in your life? Jesus knows your heart. Hear that today. Jesus knows your heart. Now, that can either be good news or bad news. It's bad news if this whole church and Christianity thing is just a game for you. If it's something where you're like, oh, well, it doesn't really matter, or I'll come, I'll, I'll put on my, my church face and, and my church attitude, and I'll play the game on Sundays, but then, you know, it doesn't really matter, and then I'll come on Sundays, and I'll ask for forgiveness, and, uh, you know, when we pray, and then, and then I'll go, and I'll play the game over and over. Jesus knows your heart. So you don't even need to waste your time. And Jesus knows your heart. If you're in a place where you are pursuing him, you are desiring for him to be the Lord of your life, and you are moving toward him, you are spending time in prayer, not because it's a ritual or what you're supposed to do, but because you want relationship with him. You're reading his word, not because, oh, well, it's what Christians are supposed to do, but because it's, the way, it's one of the ways that God speaks to us. And you do knucklehead things, you're a bonehead sometimes, you make mistakes, you don't treat people right, whatever it may be, God knows your heart. And just like Peter, in all of these instances, after Peter screwed up, what did Jesus do? What did he do? Forgave him and also did what? He restored him, he gave him another chance. He said, look, I've not, I've not given up on you. And maybe you're here this morning and you've been feeling like, I've messed up too many times. I've messed up too bad. That is what the devil wants you to believe. That is not the message of Jesus. Jesus believes in you. He knows who he made you to be. And he wants so badly for us to be in that relationship. He wanted so badly to have relationship with Peter that three times he goes, do you love me? Yeah. Do you love me? Yeah. Do you love me? Yeah. Jesus' response to that is, I know. So would you bow your heads with me? I wanna pray for you. And if you're here this morning and you are in that place of feeling like it's too late or that you've messed up too bad, I want you to seriously go before God and allow him to pour his love and his forgiveness on you. This whole series that we've been doing, this Fantastic Four series with Moses and Elijah and Esther and Peter is all about people who mess up big time or people who were not qualified for what God wanted to do through them. Guys, people just like you and me. And it's so easy to be held back because we think we've messed up and that somehow God can't overcome the ways we've messed up but he knows your heart. So God, right now, I pray for every person in this room. God, we are all in a place of needing you. We're all in a place of brokenness. And God, some here are in a place of real deep hurt and sorrow, believing that they can't come to you. And I pray that you would speak incredibly to their heart in, a, in a, such a convincing way that it's undeniable that you accept them, that you love them, that you forgive them. Show them your heart. Help all of us to take those steps toward you, trusting you, being willing to go wherever you lead us, believing that you're in control. We love you, God. Praise you, in Jesus' name.